that? <laughs> yeah. Do you know the truth, Jordan? You're <laughs> You're gonna decide that, are you? What the fuck is wrong with it? You know how they play. Welcome back to the True Geordie podcast. Today's guest is Pearl, aka Just Pearly, Just Pearly Things. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of people know you from uh, hosting the show where people just seem to lose it and you get all the heated debates, all the hottest topics in relationships, men against women, gender roles. God, abortion, all sorts of things. Um, you've really struck onto something and you're getting a reaction from people. What would you describe yourself as? I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. I am good, man. I'm good start. <laughs> um, I would describe myself as, like, as a job or, like, what, what am I like? I, I, I guess as a, what, how do you see yourself in this space, you know? Because um, mm -hmm. a lot of people try and put labels on you. Oh, yeah. And you're the, the female this, the female that, you know, I've seen all sorts of things. Um, I would say my, my content is a mix between like conservative and maybe some like red pill topics, mm. I would say. Um, How would you describe uh, red pill for those who have not got a clue? Um, it, it's hard because people use the term in so many different ways that it's very confusing. Um, mm -hmm. I would say the OG guys in the space, um, they would describe it as the study of human behavior. And basically it was a bunch of guys in like forums um, that would talk about issues they were having like with their girlfriends or their wives. And they would, um, they found like similarities mm -hmm. between the guys. Um, and so that that's like what the OG guys, but then uh, there's also like the red pill of seeing the world as it is, you know, from the Matrix movie. Mm -hmm. um, and so some people look at it as like, there's like a group of elites that we're against and mm -hmm. the, you know, that whole thing, I'm, which I don't want to go too pa into. Pa part of it also seems to be anti-feminist, anti woke yeah, like yeah. calling out things for, um, like it feels like uh, that movement mm -hmm. seemed to have felt like femi uh, feminism and woke culture have come in to realign the world in the right way they thought it should have been and they've mm -hmm. gone too far. And now this movement seems to be pushing back is that fair or not? Um, I would say the OG guys in the space would say that's not fair and that the original point of the red pill movement mm. was to just the study of human behavior. Um, however, there are other people in the space that have made it more about anti-feminism, yes. Mm. And I, I would probably put myself as one of them, so. Yeah, you call yeah. out stuff. You're <laughs> yeah, my new favorite yeah, so. Twitter, for sure. Yeah. Your tweets, like, they're explosive and I want to read some of them out oh, here no. later because I, I, I went through them last night just belly laughing at the shit you say because I don't agree with everything but I appreciate yeah. how, how real you are and it's it's rare to see anyone be so uncensored of their own opinions especially when they're controversial <laughs> why is it that you bring that to the table like because because we a lot of people have controversial opinions but they don't feel like there's any point in putting it out there because they can't be bothered with the hassle yeah um i've just always been that girl that gave her opinion when no one asked <laughs> to be honest yeah. i would say a lot of the things i say are basic and i grew up as just those are basic like for example um i always say that and, and i say this in no offense to you <laughs> but, my, but my mom always taught me as a woman like you shouldn't get tattoos yeah and i i felt like that was like a basic truth like men don't typically like girls with like like sleeves mm -hmm. and um to me that's just like something i was grown up with so i'll tweet it and then people will get mad well the the interesting <laughs> thing about you is you you've said things like a woman's place is in the kitchen watching you build a production company mm -hmm. build a business be the the lady at the forefront of that business who people mm -hmm. have to listen to and the mm -hmm. boss and then hear you to be coming up with these old school things i'm like but your role mm -hmm. in your life is kind of at odds with mm -hmm. some of your opinions is that not right that's interesting i've gotten that criticism a lot i wouldn't say it's criticism by the way well yeah i mean I, observation mm. maybe better um and i would say yeah i think it's grown it's blown up a little faster than i thought and it <laughs> came with a lot of problems that i wasn't expecting um and i would say i also have a lot of room to grow and learn mm. um this last year i've actually taken it upon myself to to learn how to cook better um i just did a white we started a second channel called wife school that. where i actually i learn and so i was kind of i was thinking about this i was like who else could figure out how to make it their job how to be a better wife hey, I, like I love it, it. <laughs> i do because I, I kind yeah. of did a lot of the same mm -hmm. I, I kind of see like what 
what you're doing is you're taking your interests mm -hmm. and you're turning them into a career. Mm -hmm. Just like I did with boxing or whatever, you mm -hmm. know? So um, I admire your ad admission of like, maybe I need to learn this. So I'm mm -hmm. just going to do it in public. And, and if people want to shame me, then so be it. Like, I don't know this, I don't know that. Yeah. No, I just did um, a wife school episode where um, it was like going through what I would cook for my husband in a day. And I, I fed my whole staff. <laughs> so like we went through and like what, what you would cook for like a family of four, because mm. I want four kids, so. Wow, you've really made your mind up. I like it. Yeah, I mean, ideally you can't really. We'll yeah, see. <laughs> and, and it's weird because you're in a relationship type uh, show where it's, constantly picking apart what men and women should expect from one another mm -hmm. and where the truth is. I would say it's more like based on the outcomes you want. Mm. So a lot of times like as women, we, we demand traditional outcomes, but we don't have any traditional skills. So it's like, how, how would you demand that? I, I don't really care if you want a modern outcome. Like that, that's not really my problem. Mm. Like you, you live your life how you want to live your life. But if, if you're asking for traditional outcomes and you don't have a traditional resume, how are you supposed to get that? Mm -hmm. And the first step is admitting you don't have that and then working on skills to get there. Yeah, and it does feel like you call people out on your show mm -hmm. uh, for, kind of wanting their cake and eating it. Yeah. A lot a lot of girls come in with this like, well, I want expect this from correct, a man and that from a man. Correct. And you're like, okay, but what are you bringing? And I've correct. seen girls who thought they were a 10. Oh my gosh. And uh, like one girl in particular, there was a clip that went viral where, you know, she was uh, what people would class as overweight, you know? And you, you kind of- A whale. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she was a bigger Wailing girl. Wailing it, yeah. And, and look, and some men would love that, obviously, but like, you know, she, she had a- Not really. Her, her perception <laughs> of herself in reality, you you were kind of having to drop some truth on her in that moment. But not just that, there, there's women who expect men to have six packs, high income, mm -hmm. yada, yada, the whole works. And you're looking at them like, but well, what are you though? And, and a lot of times, <sighs> I grew up in a 1% family. So my dad owns a software company with like 300, 200 to 300 people. Mm. Um, most of my brothers make six figures. And um, I, I just know like they would never get in the door, not even about, I mean, that girl based on her looks, but a lot of the girl, a lot of the girls, they wouldn't get in the door based on how they carry themselves. You know what men are looking for. I, I know what those type of guys are looking for. Mm. Like again, like even, even with the tattoo thing, like some, some guys want, want the girls with the sleeves. They, they don't have a care. They don't care. Mm. But like where I'm from, that's just not, you know, for girls, that's not a big thing. I feel bad. I feel like I'm picking on you. No, no, I'm cool. <laughs> look, it, it's fine. It's fine. You, you, you can bully me at this point. And no, I've seen no. how you rule the roost. But one thing that does seem to ring true about mm -hmm. you is you seem very aware that men want to be respected and you have a better understanding of men than a lot of women do. Mm -hmm. And you also understand men's problems with women. It's as if you've been a man and been in a relationship with a woman. <laughs> you, you clearly have done research. Where did you come up with this information? A couple different places. One um, was my relationship with my my little brother. Um, his name's Adam. Mm. And me and Adam, we, Adam is like what I would call like a natural like alpha or, you know, mm. leader. Um, Adam, it's like his way or the highway. And a lot of my sisters like would always fight with Adam. Like Adam was, he just, if you don't do it Adam's way. And what I realized was me and Adam always got along and we didn't when we were younger. And what switched was I just started to stop arguing with him and I just listened to him and took his opinion. And what I realized was I was like, he um, was willing to do like more for me than I realized. Like he, he, there's no one that helps me more like behind the scenes than my little brother, Adam and my dad. And it's because I genuinely like respect their opinion and listen to them. And it was a really big like turning point for me in my relationship with, it was like when I was like 12, so this was years ago, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. But where I would always argue and like fight with him than when I just listened to him. And it's also from being on the show where I just started to realize like a lot of times girls, <sighs> We just cap a lot and it just, I, then I started to feel like a guy. Cause even when I was recruiting for the show, it was like the guys would show up on time. The girls, we, we would start the show like an hour late. Cause all the girls are like 45 minutes, an hour late. So um, I would just say it's from partially from like dealing with women on the show, uh, my family and you know, past relationships too. I haven't always been perfect. And you know, you learn from that. So interestingly, you've blown up in the last year. Yeah. And the celebrity and all the bullshit that comes with it. I mean, I've experienced it and it, I'm sure that, what are you 26? Yeah, I'm 26. Okay, so there's a lot changing for you right now. You're mm -hmm. becoming a big deal. How do you think you're handling that? You ask very good questions, you know. <laughs> um, I would say at first, um, it was actually not hard for me 
Um, but I, I would say the bigger I've gotten, it's very hard being like criticized over like every little thing. And especially from a lot of, I found reaction channels are really just like looking to take you out of context or they're just like, and it, it's really not fair because they're not live. And it's like, they have pre-recorded, edited stuff. So if they say anything dumb, they can just edit it out. And you do but, long episodes that they do, can comb and, through. Correct. Mm. And I do three, sometimes four. I've even done a five, I've done a 24 hour live stream. Are they gonna clip anything that I said wrong in 24 hours, hours and hours of foot? Like you're gonna find they, something. And, and yeah. they are, obviously, because you are now money. People yeah. can be your friend to get money. People can insult you to get money. That You are, on the table, nothing is off limits now. Mm. And I noticed um, recently, I hope you don't mind me bringing this up because I found it fascinating. Mm. When I first discovered you, you had another, almost a co-host, he was mm. a um, bald headed guy who was very articulate, mm -hmm. very good speaker. Mm. And I thought you guys made a good team. And he sort of, um, you know, disappeared from the channel. He then makes a video about you very recently accusing you of being a colonizer, <laughs> which, <laughs> I was like, you know, <laughs> I'm not really sure where he's coming from this. And, it, and I watched his video. Does he look like he has a gun to his head yeah, here? <laughs> well, we've actually got um, an editor in the room who yeah. happens to also be a black man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe this is evidence. No. Yeah, he, um, has, he has a horrible life. Right? Yeah, <laughs> he, he looks really right, happy right, right now. Right blessing, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it, and look, to summarize the video, just for people who haven't seen it, give yeah. context. The guy um, said, look, on the one hand, uh, Pearl's knowledge of... Uh, uh, the history of um, uh, African struggles mm -hmm. uh, was very limited, and I had to educate her on how people colonized. He said, it. "He said schooled me." He schooled you, yeah. <laughs> and then schooled. he, he, was he schooled. takes that he takes that little footage he had of him yeah. explaining something to you about history, yeah. And then also then goes. I had, a, I had a historian actually reach out to me and say that he was wrong. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not going to quote it. Yeah. But I did have a historian like reach out to me and say like what he said was factually inaccurate, and I was like, "Well, I, I don't know." Well, the thing, I, the thing that made it. Straight Strange was that he then linked it to you then signing up uh, content creators. Mm -hmm. And he basically said, you know, on the one hand, she didn't know anything about colonizing. And on the other hand, she's trying to sign these people <laughs> up. So therefore, I mean, she is a, she's a colonizer. And I was like, look, mate, you're putting two and two together and getting five here. You're not even close to the truth. Like she, you are creating an agency. This is what, uh, you know, this is the industry that music and many, many other people are in where entertainment, people spot talent. They have a platform to boost that talent and you are actually helping people. Um, so I, I felt it was very salty, but it was for me watching you as a younger creator and, and blowing up. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is what happens. You know, people, if they're not on the gravy train, they'll t turn on you very quickly. And I thought it was a, a shame to say that happened to you so young. Yeah, no, I was very surprised by that video. Mm. It was funny. I saw it scheduled earlier in the day. It said the truth about Pearl. And I thought it was going to be him vouching for me. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I really did. I, I was on the phone with my dad. Mm. And I was like, Dad, he wouldn't do that. Plus, he's like twice my age. So I'm like, he's too old yeah. for this. And then the video came out. I was like, oh. What? <laughs> like when did? Yeah, uh, yeah and um, <laughs> yeah, that was I was. Cause you were friends, right? I, okay, I thought he said we weren't friends, but okay. I met his son, so I was like, why would you bring your son to meet me yeah. if we weren't friends? Yeah, and then there was like clips of him him insinuating like I wanted something with him, and I was like, wow. no, like what do you? Yeah, and then then the the weirdest accusation. <sighs> was the sexual whiteboard parties. Did you see that at the end? Oh yeah, where at the end he said, is it, 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 it basically there's a cliffhanger, which I was like, I mean, I rate the creativity of it because he made it look like you guys were having like orgies, like fucking Playboy I Mansion. I was sober at that point. I was so mad. Mm. It was like, um, oh my gosh, it was so funny. Cause one, he put in videos of two producers that like, like um, blessing, like he, people know, kind of know who he is, but he's not on camera and some people don't want to be on camera. Mm -hmm. So he put people in that video that like weren't a part of this, mm -hmm. you know? And then the funny thing was, it was like the tamest party ever. It was, mm -hmm. um, we gave everybody the big whiteboard, right? And we said, you can do a speech on anything. And you know, uh, my speech was the ways that men cap. 
Yeah, because I was like, I'm always on on the whim, and today I'm switching teams, you know? It. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, today. Yeah, and then he just took that and, like, ran with it, I guess. Well, he made it a race <laughs> issue, which I yeah. think, considering your channel is, you know, it's from people from all backgrounds consistently, yeah. it just... Mm, and I thought, you're going to have to have some hard evidence here. And he had nothing. You no, know, I, I don't know why he did that. Mm. Um, I, could, I could speculate, yeah. but I, I wish him well. I hope he, you know. The fact that you're so gracious I, about I it was I surprising. I hope he does his thing. I wish he didn't. That was a quite rude video, if I may say so myself. A lot of false accusations, but I mean, you know. yeah. Maybe in a few years, there'll be you'll be more uh, prone to get a lawyer out when uh, those things happen. I don't know, because that's how things change, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, there is some legal stuff going on that I can't really talk too much about, but right. yeah, we're, we're on it. You got banned from TikTok, right? What was that for? Oh my gosh, five times. Wow. I'll tell you the original ban. Because I've just got on TikTok, so mm. I better be aware of this. Yeah. Yeah, you can't call women whales. Yeah, so this is a problem. Yeah, so we've already clipped that. Yeah, yeah. So my first <laughs> go ahead, I don't care. <laughs> so my first um TikTok, I almost had to do a million followers because I was on TikTok before YouTube. That's why I've kind of blown up on shorts, because I've done it before on okay. TikTok. So when I went to YouTube, I killed the shorts game. You know what I mean? Mm. So um on uh TikTok, there is a, a video that I call this the whale attack. I've spoken about this before. So I'm doing my street interviews and this lady who who's I'm not gonna, you know, insult her and go up about her looks. But she was a whale. Yeah. So if I had to if I had to use words, she was a whale. We're talking about security and walking home alone at night. And I just can't stand the women that are like, oh my God, I can't walk home alone at night. I'm like, okay, neither can the men. Nobody can. You seem like you would be fine walking home alone at night. I think you might be fine. You know what, fine. real talk though? Like even, you know, if there's enough people, you're fucked. It doesn't matter how big you are, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and men are more likely to be victims of a violent crime. So I was just like, nobody can walk home alone at night. Mm -hmm. Like maybe... And this is what I, I was, I'm solution minded. So I said, why don't you just not live in a big city <laughs> that's dangerous and not walk home alone. And I'm not, I'm, you know, what? I live in the same city and there's sometimes I don't walk home alone cause I'm scared. And, <laughs> and she didn't like this. So she just started freaking out and she's like, I'll have you, you slag. I'll have you. Now I didn't know what a slag meant at the time. Okay. Because I'm American. So we don't use slag. I guess that's whore. Is that right? Whore, yeah. which I was like rude now. And so <laughs> because she kept calling me a slag, I was like, whatever, you're a whale. And so because oh, you I, said that to her. Yeah. Yeah. But oh. She she wow. started it. She called me a slag first. Like, you know, most of the time when I do call these women whales, they call me something first. Oh, yeah. I am I am responding. I do say the whales in generalities. I could probably cut back on that, but I think it's funny. So I yeah, I keep doing it. So anyway, so <laughs> this girl came at me and then because I, I when I put the captions on this video they I, I woke up my account was banned I'm gonna bring up some of the tweets that you've tweeted because oh I think they're great conversation some, starters sometimes I sometimes I, I don't think a lot before these tweets no we don't want to hear your excuses <laughs> I, mean, I want to I want to know we, what I said like, <laughs> make excuses after all right? okay, okay she's getting them in quickly okay <laughs> <laughs> no I think this is quite a poignant topic because it's really big right now in America especially and you are obviously uh, from America so Seeing biological men compete in women's sports makes me so sad. It's actually disgusting. Oh, yeah, I meant that. Mm. Yeah. I and you see this woman swimmer right now who's getting chased in her own university. Is she? I love her. Riley oh, Gaines, I yeah, think. Yeah, I is. love her. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. Um, yeah, no, I think it's sad. Um, I played, I don't know if you know this, but I was recruited here to play volleyball. I heard that, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I'm here. And, um, I have never had to compete against a guy, but I swear to God, if I did, I would protest. I would. Mm -mm. Oh, you would love that. I think you would actually be like, now is my chance. I'm getting them. <laughs> See, no one would be happier than you. In yeah, that I would. I would be like, let's film everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This girl actually, to be fair to her, I think she did make some really fair points. Like she stood up and said like, I have spent my whole life pretty much training for this moment. And that's, a, that's mm. what they don't understand. Like, I don't know anyone I don't want to say anyone, but there aren't many people that work harder than women's women athletes because we do it for nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, we, I've trained for 16 years um, mm -hmm. to to get to a point where I could play at this level, and it's like, what well, we don't get money out of it. You know, I'm not mad that we get paid less because less people watch it, mm -hmm. and so when you sell less tickets, you don't make as much money. But at the end of the day, like I can think of my volleyball career in 16 years. There's maybe like 
three championships that I'm really proud of. Like we went to state in high school and um, we went to the NCAAs twice in college. So that's three moments in 16 years. And if I had to compete against a biological male, that's just not fair. Come back to some of your tweets because I do want to keep going on these, they're fantastic. <laughs> Why does a man have to use his life savings to fight for his kids when it's 50% his DNA? Why isn't he automatically given custody 50%? Yeah, no, I, th I think it's actually disgusting what they do in the court system mm. here. I'm doing a documentary um, on the court system in the UK. Oh my God. Okay. It's actually disgusting. Um, the more I learn about it, um, there were women are incentivized to claim that a man like abused. I just had a girl on the show that said that they got, um, they know someone that got free housing because they went to a women's shelter and said they were abused and she wasn't even in a relationship. In 2013, when they implemented that law where they get free counsel, um, abuse allegations went up 200%. Why are we rewarding women for claiming abuse? A guy I know um, had uh, like financial issues mm -hmm. and he had to pay for all of his ex's court fees. Yes. So he's struggling financially and she gets all of her um, legal um, like letters and everything paid for by him. So if she wanted, and she wanted to be vindictive, she could ring her lawyer up every day for a month and every single phone call, every single letter goes on his bill. Well, and they'll kick the men out of the house with their with the men's name on the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So they're still paying their mortgage yep. in a house they're kicked out of. And like this guy I talked to the other day, he didn't even get to go to court for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So he like he didn't see his kids for a year and a half and he couldn't fight it because of COVID. Like it, it pushed all the court dates back mm -hmm. and um, she accused him of abuse even though the kid was a mile away. So a mile away, he could he had no rights to his kids. Mm -hmm. And then um, on top, of, he ended up homeless and losing his job because he he worked in electricity. So it, you know, I mean, imagine one day you're just you know chilling with your wife by the TV. Then you go one phone call, and now she's kicked you out of the house. The whole community thinks you're an abuser. And on top of that, um, now you have to pay child support. And he doesn't even get a day in court. Another thing that really surprised me from this guy I was talking to was he, with him being low on money, if he has enough money to support himself and uh, his ex, then um, she doesn't get a council house. But if she takes him to court and bleeds him dry, and leaves him penniless, she then gets the council house. So again, she is incentivized mm. to bankrupt her ex. Well, and then I always hear the, the trad, like the more conservatives, like they'll come out at them and be like, well, men, it's because the men aren't fighting in court. And I'm like, well, would, would you fight in court if you had a 10% chance of winning? And also the more that, you, if the, so in the event of it going to court, yeah. you are going to lose so much money. Correct. So you're literally being told, right, you either settle out of court for an extortionate amount of money or go to court and pay double that. Meanwhile, there is no risk on the woman's side at all. It's the most sexist thing I've ever seen in my life. And there's no penalty either for her, like what if she, she does all that and you get the kids, is there a penalty? Does she then have to pay all your uh, court not fees? Not at all. And I, I heard, um, this was before I really studied the system. Mm. I used to not understand, I'm like, why would not a man not fight for his kids? Exactly. Like, I, that's, I literally used to think that. Mm. And, I, and I used to like look down um, and also on homeless people. Like I was like, how could you end up homeless? You're like in your forties or fifties, mm. like you've had so much time. And then I realized a lot of these guys that are homeless have just been like wrecked in the court system. Yep imagine like if you're 40 or 50 it's not like you're, you're going to be able to start over from scratch and mm -hmm. really get to where you, you don't have the energy you have you have. can be blackmailed as a man legally you can mm. so a woman can literally say to you you either buy me a house <clears> or <throat> i'll take you to court i'll bleed you dry leave you with nothing and then i'll get a council house so you're fucked either way and you're just sitting there like Tch. And, and so it, to me when i hear about these guys that are like you know what i'll talk to the kid when they turn 18 it's, it's really sad, but I understand where they're coming mm. from because what else is he supposed to do? Yeah. And the sad thing is too, a guy could go through all of this, right? And maybe he doesn't get primary custody and he only gets, um, and he gets the kids six days a month, which is a win, right? Weekends for, for a guy, that's a win. And, and like half of holidays, I think that's more standard, whatever mm -hmm. it is. To think she, that's a win. Yeah, I know, I know that's, <sighs> that's the sad part. And, and she can just make a call and do the same thing all over again mm -hmm. and accuse him of, abu of abuse all over again. Mm -hmm. So even if he wins. And he will have to pay for the uh, fees again.
Uh, correct and so it's like guys are just more logical like women were emotional we're like fight for your kids come on like like, why would you not but from a man's point of view it's like I'm gonna fight and yet unless I get unless he gets primary custody which is 10% of the time she has all the power I mean like let's be real for a man to get custody she has to be a a crackhead correct yeah yeah so i I read something that hookers are more likely to get custody of their (laughs) sexual i don't know i don't quote me that might not be true i would not be shocked i I, I wouldn't be either like dirt you know we are dogs in 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 the eyes of the law and it's it's i i really appreciate a woman standing up for us in that respect because men are just voiceless and you see these fathers for justice and you know they're trying to make a stand but they're they ain't got hope right now, you know, they need help. So. That's who I've been working with actually mm-hmm. on the documentary. I've been interviewing a lot of them. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's really sad. And it's, it shows in society how they don't act like we need fathers. Mm. Even women, when you talk about their backup plan, if they don't have kids, it's IVF. That is the most selfish thing I've ever heard. You're gonna choose to be a single mother? Like, you don't think you need a dad? Mm. Like, I, I mean, you could do it. It doesn't make it a good idea, you know? Like, I, I think it's selfish. I think it goes back to like the me, me, me culture where it's yeah. me before the family. I want a kid so bad that <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna put my best interest instead of the kids, instead of, I don't know, lowering your standards. Well, <laughs> you know, you're opening up a whole load of different topics there, which I think are fascinating. Like, what is, for, for a man, there is no incentive for marriage anymore. None, there is none. None. Yeah. Why? I mean, the sad part is like all of the risks that come with marriage from what, I, from what I'm learning is that you really can't avoid them if you have a child. Like, like the kid really isn't yours. It's really hers legally. And I understand that women obviously like make the decision to give life. So mm-hmm. I understand that the part of the logic, mm-hmm. but we've got no rights. Like, I, I don't, fair enough, wait it to the woman, but give us something. I wouldn't even say like, I just think it's 50 percent his dna yeah it's half his kid it should be 50 i mean if he's paying all the money especially which many men are not not all but many men are covering all the bills and everything Mm -hmm. post the relationship Mm -hmm. and yet they get they get nothing for it yeah i think a lot of men even if it didn't work out would they they want to take care of their kids Mm -hmm. you know um i i just don't really believe this like deadbeat dad narrative i think a lot of times it's like more women not letting men access their kids than we really give credit to. Unfortunately, children do become used as a pawn in the game. Mm -hmm. And that is the most common thing. Let's not act like it isn't, Mm -hmm. it's very common. One thing I found really interesting by watching your show that I became Mm -hmm. more aware of is the statistics and the changing of the the dating game right now and how, Mm -hmm. um, I think, I I don't know if the stats are right, but like, how women are now less and less getting married, less and less having children before the age of 30. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of a crisis there in them. You know, people aren't settling down the way they used to. Why do you think that is? I think women are delusional. (laughs) (laughs) I think a lot of girls, like we think we're hotter than we are and we think we have more leverage than we do. When really, like by and large, as women, we offer less than we did in previous generations, just my opinion. Um, and I think- Less like, in how, what way, sorry? I think women tend to want traditional men, and I think men tend to want traditional women. You know, I, I know there's outliers in this, but mm-hmm. I think by and large, like women are attracted to more traditional men, men are attracted to more traditional women. But like, by and large, like how many women virgins are there? How many virgin brides are there nowadays? Yeah. How many women like have a cookbook, know how to cook from scratch? How many women Women um, would delete their Instagram because their husband told them to without arguing, or even delete certain photographs. Yeah, and you you comment a lot about women who post like semi nude images on their Instagram and that sort of thing. Well, you know what's interesting? Um, do, okay, do you think this is true? Because in order for me to ask this question, you have to believe this is true. Do you think attention is to women um, is what like sex is to men? Like women want I th- attention. I, I men think you're want close sex. on that for sure. I, 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 not every woman, but yeah, I think there's like definitely in, in general. There's a link that women are seeking attention, men are seeking sex. So it's interesting because if you get into a relationship, you're expected to stop sleeping with other people but the woman's not expected to delete Instagram. You know, the men are looked at as dogs if they cheat, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but the women are not looked at as dogs if they have a provocative picture on their Instagram. And if anything, they'll die trying to defend it. Mm. So it's just not, it's not really a fair exchange when you think yeah. about it. it. It is a problem in, in relationships. Like mm-hmm. for men, we're noticing like guys still liking those photographs and it makes you feel like she doesn't respect you. She doesn't, she's keeping the door open in, in case other men come along. That's mentally how we feel. You, you know who I was, Instagram I was looking at? Freaking um, Hailey Bieber's. Mm. I was 
like, how are you married to Justin Bieber and you still have provocative pictures on your Instagram? I know she's a model, but I'm like, you got Justin Bieber. You can't put that away. Yeah. And he doesn't seem like he even cheats on her with the new Christian thing. You know, that he, he I, I don't know. You know, we're not going to make The celebrities are weird. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I feel like they're weirdos and they can get away with it. But yeah. in regular life, it's but, more. But my point is she got like, that was, that was the guy that... I mean, it wasn't my thing in high school, but like every girl, every girl wanted yeah. Justin Bieber and it's like, you got him and you still got pictures in your underwear on yeah. Instagram. Back in the day, it would have just been like, get that fucking thing off. You know what I mean? You're mm. not, you're not wo- like, me- like say if a woman was about to go on a night out wearing provocative clothing, men in, in my dad's day and his dad's day would have mm. been like, no fucking way. Now the, the, the script has been flipped and now it's like, we don't want them to know we like them too much. So we're having to pretend like we're cool with that. And we're playing this game in our head, like acting like, yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm comfortable. But reality is like, <laughs> they're not. No. It doesn't make them feel fine. And when they see men dropping fire emojis underneath these pictures of their like mm. scantily clad girlfriends, it's fucking with their heads. Yeah. Cause that's the guy that's gonna be in the DMs as well. Well, and the men are shamed for it. They're called you controlling and jealous. You're a control freak, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, for not wanting your tits on Instagram, like get <laughs> out of here. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever. But, but, no, but that's the narrative yeah. that's been created. And, and if you challenge that, it's easier to gaslight you than to disprove you. Mm-hmm. And that's where you're, fi- then as a, as a lot of these men out there, cause not every man is strong enough to stand up to a woman that they're loving and they, they don't want to let go and they feel lucky to have such a beautiful woman. So therefore they're like, you know, maybe, maybe she is right. Maybe I am just a controlling and I, maybe I do need to work on me. You know what I mean? But the reality is, is like, it's only natural to want to have a bit of respect in a relationship and not put everything out there that's, supposed to be for each other right i suppose we won't be expecting that from you anytime soon (laughs) no (laughs) no (laughs) in a way now you've kind of made a rod for your own back because you kind of you've set the bar as to what you think women should be so publicly Mm. that if you ever slip people are going to be on you i know i know (laughs) I like it though. I like I like the challenge. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stay like strict with yourself. I'm a I'm a competitor, so <laughs> Well I, I I see that I'm an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of uh, other um things that you've tweeted out which I found funny. A girl doesn't sleep with one man and become a whore. A girl chooses to sleep with multiple men to become a whore. The common denominator is the woman. I'm so tired of us being, uh, not owning bad decisions. Yes, oh my gosh, because every, oh my gosh, every time on my show, it's getting me riled up. They they would say, okay, I would be, we were talking about like, if a girl sleeps around, she's a whore, right? I I felt like that's basic, okay? That that's like, (laughs) like, I I don't even think that's controversial. And like, you know, some people will argue what the number is, right? Like some, some guys will, will say over two, so some guys <laughs> wow. will say over 10. You know, the most common number I get is 10. Okay, okay. that's that just from doing it. I don't really care. I'm not mm. here to argue at what point, right? But by and large, the more women or men a woman sleeps with, the more of a whore she is, okay? <laughs> and, and then the women will always say, but what about the men? The men sleep around. Okay, okay. But again, again, the common denominator is you. Like, it's one thing if you get bamboozled by one guy, okay? We're not gonna pretend that there's no men that take advantage of women, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, we're not gonna pretend there's no players. But how many players did you meet? (laughs) You can't make the, okay, like, now let's let's say, let's say five is the number of whores. So Mm -hmm. you met five players? Five, not one, not, you didn't learn your lesson the first, second, mm. third, fourth time? No, no, ma'am, that's you. You can't, you're just not a victim. Do you think one excuse that these girls could have, mm-hmm. and I'm certainly not, you know, I don't, don't know which side of this I fall on right now, but the dating game has changed because of internet dating so dramatically, in my opinion, that men have taken the control of like, they just expect sex from the jump. Mm -hmm. So now if you're a woman who's holding out, Mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to keep a man interested when the the power is now more with the men than it's ever been and the expectation of sex is more higher than it's ever been. So for a woman to to keep a man interested long enough to know if he's going to be Mm -hmm. a serious contender, you kind of are... 
not forced, but more inclined to give him that because you don't want him to go along to the next girl because he's going to get it there anyway and he wants it. I think that's a fair argument for the small percentage of men that are getting screwed by multiple girls. <laughs> but I think for most cases, <laughs> I think in most cases, the leverage is actually with the women because okay. most men aren't getting laid. You well, know? I mean, that was the, the start that I sort of, I can't remember what was said one, on your... One out of three men are either virgins or haven't had sex in the past year under 30. And then there's this like 80-20 thing that I keep mm -hmm. hearing... The number one way that people like date now is from online dating and women only swipe right 5% of the time. So if you go on a date with someone online, like he's the, he's the one getting all the matches cause you matched with him. So he's probably in the top 5% of men. Damn. 10, 20, and you know, there's so, so that means if I had like a lot of swipes, that means I'm pretty desirable. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is great. I mean, um, you you pretty successful podcast. I'm sure yeah. you're in the top like what ten percent of income. At That's least. her words, not mine. How 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 tall are you? Six four. Six four. So you're in the top. Um, so only ten percent of men are over six foot. Mm. So I don't I don't know what six four is, but that's so you income you're probably top five percent. Boom. Height you're probably top five percent. So Boom. yeah, you could kill it out here <laughs> on these streets. <laughs> you're the funniest. So this is the problem for women though, so, right? So so competing for a guy like you, yeah. yeah, they probably would. So you know, and I don't really fault people for wanting what they want. Like if a girl wants to be single and childless, okay, go do it. You go after your career. I don't care. But it, it's like don't complain later. So if you want to compete for those guys, that's a choice, right? Like a girl competing for you, that's a choice. So you you might have to. But I also think men are willing to wait if they think it's genuine. The issue, the issue with like guys nowadays is they just don't think it's genuine because it's, they're like, what? You're a virgin at 28. Like, why am I waiting? Like that, mm. that's, I, I think that's how guys have told me they see it. Yeah. <laughs> but we had like a girl that was a virgin on our show that I actually genuinely believed and she has no problem having high value guys interested in her because it's genuine. Yeah, I did meet one girl who was uh, an older version, like late 20s. And mm -hmm. I just remember being like, oh, you, you are really playing this hard, the hard game. You know, looking for the prince. Yeah, I had um, I had a what do you call it? A video called "Your Virginity Doesn't Count If," <laughs> <laughs> and and one of them was like, if you're over a certain age, I think guys start to think, well, why are you a virgin? Like, have none of the men met your standards? Is something wrong with you? I'd million percent think that. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a happy medium, and once you hit 25 and over, men are like, yeah, what's surely, the, yeah. yeah. Do you not like? How can you just? Like I immediately would have thought you can't be that into sex because mm -hmm. at some point the yeah. urges are going to take over no matter how sensible you are. Or she was really overweight when she was younger. <laughs> That's the other thing. <laughs> Doesn't count if you're fat. Like no one you want to like try in. <laughs> so for you then, mm -hmm. you know, you're a tall girl. Women tend to like men taller. Mm -hmm. Women tend to like men who make more money than them. Is oh, that, yeah. would you say that's fair? Yeah, that is fair. You're, you're really fucked. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that my stats are so bad. <laughs> Cause you're a high earner and you're tall. Yeah, no. Do you think um, you're gonna have to compromise? Yeah, no, I definitely will. Um, I've gone for guys shorter than me. Yeah. So, I mean, what, otherwise what, die long? Men love what? taller girls as well. Guys like, don't care. Yeah, they don't give a shit. I mean, I can't do like, I don't want to say can't, but it would be tough for me if it's like crazy, but I'm like six foot, so. Um, I don't know, like five nine, it's okay. Yeah, you know? <laughs> we're letting them know, we're letting them know. Yeah. And in terms of like income and stuff like that, that's another thing that women have been big on, on your podcast, like they've said like, I want guys who are on six figures and- I feel like it's hard for me to judge because it's like, yeah, I make good income now, but it's the internet, who knows how long this will last. <laughs> and it's like, what, I talk into a microphone, so I'm better than a construction worker. Yeah. It's like, what, cause I talk. All right, more tweets. Uh, I, some of these are just so fucking funny. Strippers or whores? Oh yeah, yeah, I did tweet that. Yeah. And I did a show on that too. I mean, there was another one where it was um, the OnlyFans girls as well. Like you basically called them out. Oh my gosh, I was so excited because um, what's his face tweeted at me. Um, Logan Paul's friend. Mike, Mike some, Malak, yeah. yeah, I triggered him. I was like, I triggered Mike. I'm like, it's not my fault you dated Lana Rhodes. Seriously, mm. like so you did that. Mm. Anyways. Um, but yeah, um, I just thought it would be funny to just tweet basic things and see if people argued. And then everyone was arguing with me. They were like, oh, well, a stripper might have a lower body count than your average girl. And I'm just like, okay, but she's still selling her boobs for money and getting naked. Like, yeah. what else do you call that? You obviously come from, like, I've seen some of your family photographs. Like, you come from what looked like a very wholesome family mm -hmm. background. So to you, like, 
I, I assume, have you ever talked to people like that, like OnlyFans girls, strippers, that yeah, sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. And what is it like for you when you are saying these things and then, then you're meeting people and finding more about their real lives and how, because you mm -hmm. said earlier, you had an, uh, uh, an opinion of homeless people mm -hmm. that was then sort of explained. Mm -hmm. Did you have any epiphany when you meet these girls or not? I think some of them are in bad situations and that's why they do it, but I still have very little sympathy to be honest because mm -hmm. um a lot of men are put in those same situations and they're just homeless like at least women we have an out uh. i personally don't mind like strippers and whores that accept their outcomes my issue is when they start whining that men don't want to date them it's like well what did you expect mm. you know pick your pick your poison pick your battle yeah i think obviously there are some men who will date only fans mm -hmm. girls but like like i wouldn't even pay for only fans yeah. You know, I, I, I think men who do that, you know, you need to get out, lad. Why would you? You're top 5%. Hey. <laughs> but also, like, OnlyFans chicks, they, they are picking a certain road. And, 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 and with Lana, she is a great example because mm -hmm. she picked the porn road, made millions, and then at the end of her porn career, denounced porn, said it was horrible, said it was this, said it was that, said it was the other. And then I recently had a porn star uh, on my podcast, a male porn star who worked with her, mm -hmm. who said she wasn't like that on set. She was quite happy, fine. She got treat like royalty, you know? So for her to go out and uh, denounce it because she's now being slut shamed, it's because of the outcome. It's, yeah. uh, she's blaming the process because it's easier to be a victim mm. than it is to just hold your hands up and go, I've picked this road and now at my bed, ironically, and now mm. I have to lie in it. And mm. I think you got a point to be honest. Yes, yeah, I respect the ones. I had one girl, the one that Auntie, you know, the one that Auntie interviewed. She was so cool. She was a stripper and she came on Auntie's show. She like interviewed her one on one. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, yeah, I've made these choices. These are the outcomes. Mm. That's it. She's not whining about what the outcomes are. I just don't like whiners. Look, one of my generalizations and one of my favorite tweets from you is I, I generalize and I will continue to generalize. <laughs> but one of mine is like in the, with the women I've met and fuck me, I can't believe I'm saying this, but here we go. They don't like being wrong, you know, and they don't take kindly mm -hmm. to being told they're wrong. And Whereas you're a woman doing that to them. You're literally putting, and I, fuck me, I wonder why, um, I wonder what would have happened in your career if you'd have been a guy and you'd have come up with all these opinions. You'd have been lynched. Your head would be on a stake outside <laughs> of like palace, the Buckingham Palace. Yeah, I certainly have an advantage because I'm a woman. I think a lot of people like to see people like speak on things. Why do you think accountability and being told they're wrong is such a trigger for a lot of women? I think we don't, really see the world for what it is in a way until we're a certain age because we're bailed out of bad decisions. So it's like every bad decision we make, there's a bailout. So if you wanna sleep around in the old days, you get pregnant by the wrong guy, now you got a shotgun wedding, you're stuck for life. Nowadays, birth control. Now if birth control fails and you do get pregnant by the wrong guy, which some of you ladies, I just don't understand how you do that like a million times, but um, that's not my battle. Now, now, then what, what happens next? Um, you can get an abortion for free. You don't even gotta pay for it here. So now, or you can give birth and give the kid up for adoption, or you can be single, live your best life and put them on child support. I also think that women are like, we're treated better in the world and we're given more help by men generally, um, just because we're young women. Um, and that I think does go away a little bit the older you get, you know, the less like attractive you are. <laughs> <laughs> there is a correlation there. And even like, let's say we're bad with money. Um, we can get free assistance from the government benefits. Um, and if we get homeless, there's women's shelters. Mm -hmm. And then we can just claim abuse for a boyfriend we don't have and get a free apartment. I just think a lot of times, whenever we have to take accountability for a decision, like how do you learn accountability? There's bad outcomes, there's consequences. But for women, like we don't really have consequences for much. If we're bad with money, we're bad sexually. Like, and you'll probably still get married even if like even corn stars get, sorry, if we say corn, porn stars get married. Oh, is that from the TikTok <laughs> thing? Yeah. Because um, you you did corn just to stop you from getting blocked or whatever. Yeah, I don't. I just heard it wasn't good on YouTube, so yeah, we just started yeah. saying corn. Good idea. <laughs> I should have thought of that before I interviewed yeah. the porn star. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but in terms of abortion, you've been quite vo uh, vocal about that. That's quite mm -hmm. an interesting one. Yeah, I'm very pro life. What is it about abortion that you? feel uncomfortable about? I have a, a personal anecdote to it um, where I've been on both sides of adoption. So my parents had six kids growing up. I was the second out of the six. I was the oldest girl. They adopted three teenagers. One teenager they adopted when I was like a baby. She moved out 
so I didn't really grow up with her. Two teenagers they adopted after I left for college. I didn't grow up with them, but they lived with us for a couple of years. Three teenagers, so that's nine. When I was 22, uh, my parents sat us down in a room. Um, we were somewhere at a wedding, I think. And they look at us and they say, um, you have a brother and his name is Greg. And my mom actually got pregnant when she was 17 and they gave that kid up for adoption. Um, same parents, a lot of people think different parents now, same dad, um, but they were just young, they just started dating and they gave him up for adoption. Um, and I actually met him when he was in his 30s, I was 22 or 23 when I first met him. And it was crazy how similar he was to us. Like he walked like my brothers, he, he was, had the same sense of humor. He grew up in a small town um, in the middle of like rural Wisconsin. And um, he owned like a sailboat company and like sailed around the world. And my family's very adventurous and his parents like had never left, left their hometown. <sighs> and that's how crazy it was. Like he was just like us, even though we, had, we didn't talk to him until he was like 30. And um, so uh, that experience just kind of made me pro-life because I feel like my mom could have had an abortion and it would have been a shame because now he just became a dad, he just got married. And I genuinely do believe it's a, a child. Um, I think if people were pulling um, surgically, oh, if they were opening up dogs and surgically pulling off the limbs one by one and then crushing the skull and vacuuming it out, I think people would be outraged. But some reason when we do that with women, you know, um, nobody talks about it. And it, they, a lot of people don't know um, that when there's a unique DNA sequence that starts from conception and that has um, the baby's like eye color, hair color, personality trait, like that's from conception. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a doctor, like I know the ins and outs of it, but I just, yeah, I just don't believe in abortion. And I think there's too many options and resources for women to be getting abortions. And I think it's crazy because it's legal up to six months. And um, yeah, it's it, here, you can get it for free up to six months. And there's children that have survived before that and like if you look up videos I, I genuinely think everyone would be pro-life if they saw a video of an abortion because literally like uh, imagine up like a five-month-old child you're which is mostly developed and they literally pull the limb off pull the leg off pull the arm off pull the middle out and then they crush the skull and vacuum it out and that's not good for women either like i don't a lot of, they'll, they'll say it's like a woman's right to choose acting like this is something that's going to help us when i know women that are traumatized from having an abortion we had a girl um that came on our show and she even talked about how here she didn't um know that when she like they she took the pill which is like an earlier one and she said she didn't realize how developed the kid was she thought it was a fetus and it came out and it was like she's like it had a head it had fingers and it was like traumatizing for her. I could see you're really passionate about this. And also I could see there where you were talking about your brother, like mm. how much that meant to you. Mm. Uh, and it's nice that it's not just like, I know you like to be controversial, but mm. I can see that you're speaking from a place of like real uh, empathy there. Mm. And uh, a lot of women speak about what happens if they are attacked and uh, impregnated, etc. Um, what do you say to those people? Because that would be something that people are saying at the screen now. Well, um, it's a really small percentage of cases anyway. I mean, mm. the data, I, I, they kind of hide the data on abortion. It's not very well collected, but mm -hmm. in the states that they have collected it in the US, it's less than 1% of cases. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of times, like people kind of use that as a cop out, in, in my opinion anyway, um, because it's like you're arguing for 1% of cases. What about the other 99? But I, I don't believe in abortion ever. Um, I think it's really sad when that happens I think I could even go as far I don't want to like die on this opinion but the death penalty for rapists to be honest um, that are actually convicted like the, the issue you would get into is that false accusations all that stuff you, you know but if there's a way to prove he did it and it actually happened then I could go as far to suggest the death penalty for rapists but I just don't think you can take that out on a child like the, the kid's innocent what did the kid do and I think it goes back to the, the the real opinion you have to have is do you think it's a kid or do you not think it's a kid if you don't think it's a kid I understand like the the people's opinion on it because like why, why would there be any problem if it's not a kid but if you think it's a kid if it's not a kid what is it is the question yeah I do understand mm -hmm. if someone is a victim of an attack wanting mm -hmm. to not go through with giving birth with that child mm -hmm. given 
you know, to raise the the the, the attack as child, it's a hell of a and even and uh, just to even give it up for adoption is a lot. But I overall, I understand the other side of that. Like if you know, if if this is some people will just use it as a form of contraception, and which is insane. There was a girl that had seven abortions. Jesus, I think forty percent of women that get abortions have had two or more. Mm. So it's just women getting them over and over. I mean, what's the best predictor of future behavior, past behavior? Mm-hmm. So a lot of the women, like half of the women getting abortions, it's not their first. Have you ever had an issue with saying this to people? Like, because I can imagine you could trigger someone with this level of... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that absolutely. I've had people stop being friends with me over this opinion. Wow. Yeah. What um, does that feel like? Is that hurtful? Yeah, it was really hurtful. Because you come across bulletproof. Right, you mm-hmm. are very calm. I've seen people challenge you, you mm-hmm. but like you are, a, you know, you're a woman. You, you, you <laughs> preach femininity. You, you know, there must be moments where mm-hmm. you're not the the boss. You know what I mean? That you come mm-hmm. across like. No, um, I would say I actually am pretty emotional. To mm-hmm. be honest, um, I don't. I mean, I, I'm smart. I don't put it on camera, <laughs> you know. Um, but no, I had a friend of 20 years stop being friends with me um, over this stuff, and then she came out and put like videos out about me. I didn't really want to give it too much attention, uh-huh. but um, yeah, it's really sad to be honest. When you say I'm smart, I don't put it on camera. Why? What? What? What do you mean smart? Why? You can't respond too much to like trolls and like haters. Otherwise, you, you're giving them power. Mm-hmm. You know, because they see that they can react to you, and then they make money, and then they just keep going. So it's like, if they see you get emotional, and they see you like that, they have an effect on you. They're just gonna keep going. Um, yeah, and I just kind of look at it like a job in a way. Or you cry at work. It's yeah. probably not good to cry at work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always think if someone doesn't know you personally, don't take it personally. Yeah, because they just yeah. Like there was this chick who was. Um, you actually quoted the tweet like she there was a video that she made about you where she was psychoanalyzing you and then she was like playing with her tits and being oh like, gosh she was so weird i'm an only fans girl and she she wouldn't do this but i get meant to come and all this crazy yeah. and you just literally quoted it like she's crazy <laughs> just laughed at her yeah no she's nutty the harder ones have been the people that i know that have turned i would say mm-hmm. um that i didn't really expect when crazy women offer their crazy opinions i really don't care <laughs> like i just think mm-hmm. they're stupid to be honest well, like you're telling me i'm gonna take the opinion seriously of a woman who's like going like this on <laughs> okay like let me just get take everyone's opinion yeah. then <laughs> And uh, I mean, like she was an OnlyFans chick, I think. So she obviously had a vested interest in you. Didn't even know. Didn't well, even know. <laughs> she, said, she did say that, but I, I was just laughing at your, your tweet now. But one thing that you did say in regards to birth control and, and, and that sort of thing on Twitter was, I think this is a very interesting question of, can a man fully consent to sex if the woman lies about being on birth control? Yeah, because the women always say they can't, like mm. you can, I think you can file in some states, um, can I, I can say rape, right? Yeah, or, I mean, yeah. Okay, I don't, we I might don't just, know. You know. I don't know, but they, you can um, say that a guy raped you if he took off the condom and you didn't notice. Mm-hmm. Um, so did you rape him if you say you're on the pill and you're not? Mm. That, that's my question. Um, because when you think about it, when we have sex, there's only one party. I mean, minus the... the, the exception they're gonna be like what if you don't see the condoms i'm like really you did okay fine Mm -hmm. but but the there's only one only the women get all the information about the sex because Mm -hmm. they we know if we're ovulating or not or you should anyways um you know if you're on birth control or not and you uh, assuming it's consensual you you pick who you sleep with where the men it's like their their options are condom or no condom vasectomy or no vasectomy and the women also have plan b abortion a dot like all those other stuff i was listing before so women have all the information men don't and that's why men get like bamboozled into children they're like i thought she was on birth control <laughs> <laughs> careful top five percent <laughs> genuinely that's yeah. that's a real thing where like surprise you know it it, it, the like there is no way that the data like wouldn't back up like accidental pregnancies being more common with rich men than 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 poor guys well when you think about girls only ovulate like what three days four Mm. days maybe five total in a month but i think there's only like two or three days you can it's really likely you'll get pregnant so when people say like oh it was an accident i'm like i'm just a little skeptical tell that to drake yeah oh yeah like come on yeah. she, she was probably like okay i'm ovulating this yeah, day yeah she texted him <laughs> fully because for those who don't know drake got 
you know, had a kid with a, a girl who was basically on video dancing naked and whatever else. Well, and a lot of these women are predatory. Um, <clears throat> I just did an interview with a guy and he talked about how uh, like women will book out hotels by like NBA players, right? And these women go to these games with the express purpose of trying to get these men to cheat on their wives. Like, and he, he talked about one girl that he like dated later and that she was so proud. He's, she's like, it took me two years, but I finally slept with that. It was like a professional hockey player. Wow. He's like, he said he would never cheat on his wife and I got him to like, they, they like take pride in that. There's like women that like they, they're predators. They, they know everything about these men. So you think you're running into a, a, you're 21 years old guy. You just got in the league. You think, oh, this that girl at the bar is so nice. She knows exactly what you want to hear she knows all your interests she knows everything about you and you just think oh she's a nice girl you know and Ma- th- and these women know how to present themselves in a way that like makes them seem like the girl next door oh, they make you feel like a king yeah yeah, yeah. And that, that's the problem is men we're the chaser not mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it's a very strange thing then men just think the best of the situation because they aren't women have been told from day one like say no to boys and all of that you know that was never yeah well i mean we're all women i just think are viewed as innocent and i think men just have that they have an you guys have an innate protect like we want to trust you yeah and we want to and and i think you guys have an innate like you like you want to protect us too Mm. naturally and i think women know that and there's certain women that take advantage of it and like how how common is we always talk about the player men but we never talk about the predator women I mean, in my space, we do, but not overall in the media. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things that surprised me about women the older I got was how women could reframe things. And 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 so, like, you'll find yourself arguing with a woman and you realize it's a competition of who can claim victim. You know, mm. like, oh, but you did that. No, but you did that first. But then you did that. And what led to this? Do you know what I mean? And like, it's like, fucking hell. I can't just be the, I can't get a sorry for if my life depended on it here. Yeah, there ain't no sorries coming to me. Like, have you ever seen those videos of like girls trying to justify their cheating? Like they got caught uh, cheating and then they start crying. I'm like, bitch, <laughs> why are you crying? Yeah. Like I saw this video, this guy, and it could be fake, you know, it's the oh, internet, yeah. but, but things go viral because people relate to it, right? Otherwise people wouldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. And she'd screwed like three guys while they were dating. And she's like, well, you probably cheated on me too. And it's just like, okay, can we talk about what you did first? Yeah. That, 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 my thing is like I, I've gotten sorries from a woman in a heated argument and then I've been like and then immediately afterwards comes all of the justifications <laughs> and I'm like your sorry doesn't mean anything anymore because you've said sorry and then now you're telling me why it was really my fault the whole yeah, time I'm sorry but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah if I hear but after sorry I'm like that. what the <laughs> fuck are we doing then you know this ain't over we're just still going you know what I didn't understand too? something I learned about men is men really don't like when you say why like when when you when they tell you something and you're like but why why like i didn't realize how annoying that is to guys because <laughs> we're just like nosy or you know we just want to know we want to be in the know and yeah. i didn't realize how exhausting that is to guys to just have to explain every little thing well yeah because <laughs> i th- and uh, luckily i think in this red pill space that they are realizing like they're coming out with a lot of things like men are looking for respect and peace yeah and if we don't get that we will never be happy it's it, women think it's about love and that's part of it but it, it ain't all of it you know what i mean and if we're constantly being challenged questioned and and not feeling like our opinion is valid or matters then we will be in a relationship thinking i want out and i want someone who does do those things for me yeah and that was actually one of like the turning points i had with my brother that I, like i was talking about earlier mm-hmm. was he i didn't realize that he felt like um you know that was disrespectful to him and always asking and asking and asking mm-hmm. instead of just listening old-fashioned men it, mm-hmm. correct me if i'm wrong because obviously you know these kind of guys it's like generally we let women have their opinion on almost everything but when our foot's down then it needs to matter because if that if that doesn't matter then then where is our power what do we what do we, we're giving you you want the walls pink i'll paint the walls pink you want the fucking carpet's green I'll, you know what i mean but like if if i put my foot down it needs to matter but like it feels like modern women really haven't grasped that 
I'll tell you something. I think that the laws have changed how we interact in relationships. Um, we, you always hear the phrase, happy wife, happy life. She wears the pants, mm -hmm, right? That mm -hmm. those are common, right? Very common. And I, would you, you could, would you agree or disagree that more women lead than men lead nowadays in relationships? One million percent, yes. Okay, and I think about why that is. And you know what, like, another thing that's common, just yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Men taking women's last names or babies Correct. taking women and women and men double barrel the names like, like the yeah. old the old ways of like a man being the head of the family even in name is not the same anymore. And and I question why and this actually came from one of the Fathers for Justice guys that okay. I interviewed and he was saying it changes the way we interact in relationships because think about it okay if me and you are married right and if I leave I get everything and you leave and you lose everything, uh -huh. you're always gonna be trying to make it work. Oh yeah. And I'm always gonna have one foot out the door. And even if we're not married, we just have a kid, it's the same thing. The men have more incentive to make it work where the women have more incentive to leave, which is why by and large, and you know, there's exceptions, there's guys that get good prenups or figure out, you know, ways around it, whatever. But by and large in a society, like the men are always gonna be trying to please the women because even if they don't know all the stuff about the laws, I think men still innately know they lose more than she does. Mm -hmm. And women innately know that we get more because we've seen someone get screwed over in divorce. Like, you don't know anyone. Yeah. You're a shitty wife if you don't honor your husband and respect his leadership. And then you said, you're a shitty wife if you don't sleep with your husband. Yes, and this is like basic, you know? Because what's the opposite of that? Dishonoring your, are you a good wife if you dishonor your mm -hmm. husband? Are you a good wife if you don't sleep with him for five years? Like, that's what men want. Well, well, that's you, like the one thing. <laughs> well, one of your next tweets was kind of piggybacking off of that, which is, is it more common for women to get fat after marriage? marriage or for men to stop working after marriage what are you getting at there just to un just to understand that because the women will get fat right <laughs> and so all these whales will come at me so they'll they'll be like oh well i had these kids and, yeah. and i don't and I've said this, I, I don't think men expect our bodies to be exactly the same as when we were 25, of okay? Course, yeah. Like, guys are reasonable. Uh -huh. However, they didn't expect you to gain 100 pounds, Diane. Like, <laughs> like they didn't, ex he didn't expect that. And so it's like, and then the girls will be like, oh, he's out of shape too. But I'm like, he, he's still probably providing more than uh -huh. you are. And so it's like, we're in this society where men make more than women, but women are fatter than men. And I know they'll, they'll use the stat and they'll be like, some women under 30 in cities make more. Okay, fair. Mm -hmm. But over a lifetime, men, men tend to make more. And mm -hmm. I think it's true because men over, you know, I think men like want to work longer, like in their 40s, 50s, women are like, mm -mm. If someone is nagging and moaning at home, it'll do wonders for your work ethic. Uh, <laughs> but, but also like, yeah, I, I hear you. Like men are driven by, by sex mm -hmm. a lot more than women are. Therefore, mm -hmm. a woman's looks are more important than a man's looks. We, men, we kind of rely on women loving us to still want to fuck us rather than our physical attraction, you mm -hmm. know? We, we think bringing home the bacon mm -hmm. is actually what should make a woman want to, you know, give mm -hmm. us what we want. And have you ever had a moment in a relationship where someone's hit you with some home truths and you found that hard to listen to? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Can you remember what it was? Oh, actually, oh, oh my gosh. One time I tried to make my ex-boyfriend his favorite meal and he thought it was so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, it hurt my feelings so much. I worked all day to make that. I worked, oh, I worked the entire day to make his favorite meal and I was so proud of it. And he said it was terrible. Oh. This is, I used to be a pretty bad cook. I'm a lot better now, but I used to be pretty bad. And that really wounded you? Yeah, I was really mad. In my experience, I come into London, I started dating obviously, like mm -hmm. women aren't like, they're, they're not in a hurry to cook for you. Like it's it's an, a rarity. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, women, in my experience, like mm -hmm. they, they weren't like any good at cooking because they've grown up with this, like they all went to university. They all been living yeah, off, yeah, that's they all been true. eating that's pot true. noodles. Yeah, they're not like, they, they live like teenage boys, these girls. <laughs> they're more messy than me. Do you that's know what I'm true. saying? I actually agree with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm fucked in London essentially because I, I came from old fashioned mother who literally like 
the house was so spotless you know you now being in with modern women it's such a clash for me mm. um and i guess it must be for you hanging out with modern women as well i'm kind of messy to be honest mm. so well there you go I, you I, have to I, sort yeah, that out yeah i know i'm trying to work i'm, I'm working on it yeah. but i definitely am messy <laughs> um, um i used to be a pretty bad cook too but you can attest my cooking's gotten better right hey, the thumbs up we got the thumbs up <laughs> I, cook, I cook for the staff actually all the time you got some controversial tweets again should we believe women who say that they were sexually assaulted but didn't file a police report oh yeah um i'm, I'm gonna say no now i'll tell you why All right. so i used to just believe women to be honest that was my default like if a girl says oh i was assaulted oh i was like this you know my your first instinct she's crying she's sad she's emotional whatever your first instinct is to believe her mm -hmm. and i used to on my show until um i started asking questions like just as follow-up so she would say this happened and i would say well did you file a police report no um but it, it to me it doesn't make sense well, why are you coming on my podcast if you're afraid to talk to the police but you're afraid to talk into a microphone to million i 1.4 million subscribers or three something mm -hmm. like that uh, it just didn't equate so i just think we're a little bit too quick to believe women um without any evidence a lot of these girls would say my ex-boyfriend that i dated for this long anyone watching the show is going to know who that guy is and should we just believe her even though there's no evidence we've no one's even investigated it just based off her word and in a way they're kind of defaming his character and ruining his reputation and in, in there because people will see it right one girl came on and said that her ex abused her and i said well did you ever hit him mm -hmm. she did mm. and so it's like now you're you're labeling him as an abuser when you hit first Mm -hmm. So how are you a victim? How are you abused? And I just think we don't ask women questions when they tell these stories. Obviously, there's some truth in what you're saying in terms of some examples you've given they I can't mm -hmm. argue with at all. And then there's some victims who, for them to come forward and talk to the police takes a lot of strength and a lot of years before they can feel like they can do that. Do you agree? No. Really? If someone raped me... I'm going to the police. If someone punches me in the face, I want them to, why would I not want to tell the police? I think for you, I believe you because you're a very mm -hmm. like confident speaker. I had a moment when I was a young kid where mm -hmm. babysitter touched me and that, and I didn't say anything for years and years, mm -hmm. not because, you know, it didn't happen, but obviously because mm -hmm. it just never felt um, right. You know, I don't know why. I didn't feel like anything. Like, I mean, well, that were, was a, a different... You were, you were a kid, weren't you? Yeah, I was mm. a kid. So that was a different example. Mm. But but the, I guess the point I'm making is I've heard some victims mm. talk about things in a way that I'm like, I get why that would be very traumatic mm. and talking. Like, you're scared that people aren't going to believe you. Mm -hmm. It might be, a, often mm -hmm. is a family member. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the police, you're going to fuck your whole family up. Mm. I mean, yeah, I, I could see your point. Mm. Um, I think there are some cases where, um, you know, true, yes. Mm. But I, I think by and large, should we just believe people? based on their word, mm. uh, my answer is no. I, I think you need some evidence. One of the trickiest bits is the evidence. So I, if a rape happened three months ago, mm -hmm. getting evidence is very difficult. Well, I, that's why I think we should encourage victims to go to the police. Mm. That's my opinion. I think we should, because you don't want him to do that to someone else mm -hmm. or her, right? Yeah, I hear, I hear mm -hmm. what you're, I, where you're coming from. I, I do mm -hmm. think that does take a lot of strength and not like you are a very strong person, mm -hmm. that's clear. Mm -hmm. and, and often people right after that happens, mm -hmm. they're, at their, they're probably their worst. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that, I'm not saying people don't lie. I mean, I've just covered a story recently where this girl smashed her own face in with a hammer. Did you see that? I didn't actually watch. I, I like saw the article title, yeah, but I, yeah. I didn't see the video. Some chick smashed her own face in with a hammer and now is in prison after mm -hmm. wrongly accusing people. So that does happen. Mm -hmm. But equally, I do see the other side of it. Um, yeah, I mean, my whole point is I just think we shouldn't have a court of public opinion. A lot of girls will go around saying that a man abused them or mm -hmm. a man graped them or whatever with no evidence. And now we're in a point where his entire character is destroyed in that community. And he didn't even get his day in court. If she doesn't, like, I, I hear yeah. you. I think for me, mm -hmm. if, if a woman comes out and goes to social media before she goes to the police, that for me feels, I have, I, I'm not comfortable mm -hmm. with that because... If that happened, why are, you, why are you going to people before you go into the police? And, or even just like going around telling the whole town about it. It's like you're going to tell everyone in town and you're not afraid to do that, but mm -hmm. you're afraid to go to the police. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't add up to yeah. me. Yeah, I, I, I 
I agree with you on that sense. I think there's mm. some people who probably have bottled things up for years mm. and wouldn't tell people like me and you mm. in a public forum. But mm. if you're on a public forum mm -hmm. and yet you haven't gone to the police, mm -hmm. that doesn't add up. Yeah, especially with this girl, she dated the guy for like six years. So every, everyone watching knows who it is. Wow. And you know, at first, like the story is, oh, he abused me. And then we ask more and more questions. Like one thing that girls always say is there's bruises on my arm or something like that. And then you've come to find out, well, she, there's bruises on your arms because you were trying to hit him. Oh. And so that's, so then so she's like, oh, he held me down. So it's, I don't know. What's your take on women hitting, sorry, on men hitting women back after they've been hit? I think from a moral perspective, I feel like if you hit someone, you should expect to get hit back. I could understand why men avoid it mm -hmm. because what's that gonna, like the police are gonna take her side, so. What kind of relationship do you see yourself having? Do you think you will, because, this whole production company has really mm -hmm. taken off and I, I don't say it's slowing down. Mm -hmm. And it would be very hard for a man to come into your life and be like, yeah, you're getting in the kitchen now, love. <laughs> like, how do you imagine that's going to work out? I really hope to be in a relationship where I can trust uh, my husband's leadership. Um, and I want to cook. I want to cook for my family, to be honest. That's mm -hmm. important to me. Do you think you'd ever walk away from all of that that you've created now? just to be a mother and give it up? Or do you think you'll balance it? If push came to shove, I would give it up. What does push come to shove mean? If I felt like I could not raise a family and do this, I would give it up. Right, okay. I've got one last question mm -hmm. that I like to ask people. How would you like to be remembered? Um, at the end of my life, I'd like to be remembered as a good friend and a good mother and a good daughter. That's a great answer. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was Pearl on the True Geordie podcast. Do check her channel out if you want to watch people having great debates. I really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed having you on. Thanks. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd love to do it again sometime. Yeah, and, for sure. Um, we should. You should come on on a show. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> come no on. Doubt. Come on with the feminists. Yeah, I'll piss them off. <laughs>